Hello guys and welcome back to the Yellow series and in this video we're going to talk about the Yellow V6 model. The Yellow V6 model is a little bit intriguing because the repo, the code repo was actually released around June or August if I remember correctly and the paper for the Yolo V6 model was actually released after Yolo V7 in September. And uh, Yolo V6 model was released by Meituan Vision AI department. Before we move on, make sure you subscribe to my channel and ring that notification bell so you never miss another episode. So now let's move on to the Yellow V6 model. The Yellow V6 paper was published by researcher Satmi Tuan. The initial code base of Yellow V6 was released in June 2022. It is perhaps the best and most improved version of the Yellow models, and it's even better than Yellow V7. The first paper, along with the updated versions of the model, version 2 was published in September. Uh, if you remember, Yellow V7 paper was published around July, but uh, Yellow V6 model was released after Yellow V7, but I made it the Yellow V6 uh, video before Yellow V7 so that uh, I, I wanted to keep the sequence of the versions. So even though its paper came late than Yolo V7, it is considered the most accurate of all object detectors. So before we delve into the Yolo V6 model, let's first uh, describe uh, what is Meituan. For those of you who are not familiar with the company Meituan, uh, since I am actually living in China, I'm very familiar with Meituan. Uh, it was formerly known as Meituan Dianping, and it's a Chinese shopping platform for locally found consumer products and retail services, including entertainment, dining, delivery, travel, and other services. The company is uh, headquartered in Beijing and was founded in 2010 by Wang Xing and Yolo V6 was released by Meituan's Vision AI department. Now, how, let's talk about how the Yolo V6 model actually works. Yolo V6 model is an anchor-free model. It provides better generalizability and costs less time in post-processing. The improvements in Yolo V6 includes uh, longer training epochs, quantization, and knowledge distillation. The architecture of Yellow V6 comes with a new revised reparameterized backbone and neck. And finally, the loss functions, you know, the newly introduced loss functions in the Yellow V6 model includes the very focal loss for classification and the distribution focal loss for detection. So now let's talk about the things that are newly introduced or added into the Yellow V6 model. Unlike the previous model architectures, which use uh, anchor-based methods for object detection, Yellow V6 opts for the anchor-free method. So uh, we have previously mentioned in the Yellow X uh, video that the Yellow X uh, model was an anchor-free version and the rest of uh, the Yolo models are anchor based, which means they rely upon anchor boxes uh, to make predictions. But the Yolo V6 model is kind of similar to the Yolo X model in that it's an anchor free method. This makes Yolo V6 51% faster compared to most anchor based object detectors. This is possible because it has three times fewer predefined priors. And Yolo V6 uses the efficient rep backbone, consisting of a rep block, rep conv, and 
csp stack wrapped blocks further yolo v6 uses the vfl and dfl as loss functions for classification and box regression respectively and uh, these are uh, new concepts so as uh, in order to make sure that you are familiar with these concepts uh, we're going to explain them in the upcoming slides first uh, let's start by talking about the general model architecture for yolo v6 several mod modern and state-of-the-art practical techniques have been used to make all the yolo v6 models as fast and accurate as possible as with any other YOLO model, the YOLO V6 II has three components. They are the backbone, uh, the neck, the head, and all have something new to offer. As mentioned earlier, one of the biggest aspects of YOLO V6 is that it is anchor free and uses a reparameterized backbone. So as you can see from the image on the left, it is a complete display of the YOLO v6 object detection model architecture. And here we can see that uh, the backbone is known as efficient rep backbone, which uses a reparameterized backbone. And the neck of the model is actually called rep pan. So with the, we add a prefix known as rep uh, to the previous solo models and we get the new uh, YOLO v6 model because uh, there is an introduction of a new block known as rep block both on the backbone and on the neck part of the network and finally we have the head part of the network uh, which includes the efficient decoupled head Although uh, multi-branch networks like ResNet provide better classification performance, they are slower during inference. As you all know that ResNet it uses uh, residual connections, and these connections actually improve the performance of the model, but due to the introduction of the residual connections, it slows down the uh, inference and training time. But whereas linear net networks like BGG are much faster because of their effective 3x3 three three convolutions, however, they do not reach as high an accuracy as ResNets or networks with res residual connections. So linear networks like BGG 16 and 19 uh, are much faster because they are linear and they don't contain any residual connections but the drawback is they're not as accurate as uh, residual networks such as ResNet. For this reason, the YOLO v6 models use reparameterized re backbones and reparameterization the network structure changes during training and inference. So as you can see from the image on the left, yeah, you can see that we have a rep VGG block and this rep VGG block has residual connections. So there is a one by one convolution followed by a batch normalization layer and a three by three conv and a batch normalization layer and also a batch norm on the next residual connection. And we call this block rep VGG block and we use it n times. So if we compress all of these uh, residual connections, then we just get a rep conv. This is what is known as a rep conv. It only includes a 3x3 three three convolution and it makes it much faster. So during training, they're using the rep BGG block in order to push the accuracy by taking advantage of the residual connections. But when they change during inference time in order to save time, uh, they just use the 3x3 three three convolutions by using the reparameterized convolutions and uh, they just use this for after the model has been trained they just use uh, the rep comp only for inference so 
Uh, you have to note that rep VGG blocks are used while training YOLO v6 and rep conv blocks are used during inference. So for the medium and large models, the YOLO v6 architecture uses reparameterized versions of the CSP backbone, and we call it the CSP stack rep. And the entire backbone of the YOLO v6 architecture is known as efficient rep. So when we started uh, talking about the overall architecture of the model, we have seen that the backbone is known as efficient rep. Uh, for the smaller models, uh, it just uh, uses the efficient rep as a backbone, and for the medium and large models, uh, it uses the reparameterized versions of the CSP backbone, and they named it as the CSP stack rep, uh, because the VGG rep block is used only for the nano and smaller models. It's known as the VGG rep block. But for the medium and large models, we call it the CSP stack rep because it actually uses the cross stage partial connections in addition to the reparameterized residual connections. In most object detection models, the NEC aggregates the multi scale feature maps using the PaaS aggregation network. And this is not different in YOLO v6 and similar to, hap to what happens in YOLO v4 and YOLO v5. So we have called the efficient rep, we have called the backbone the efficient rep, and we call the new NIC architecture the rep pan because the PaaS aggregation networks is also using the rep block that we have mentioned previously. It's similar to the one that's used in YOLO v4 and YOLO v5 models, but the only modification was the introduction of this rep block convolutions because uh, it increases the accuracy of the model. The PaaS aggregation network in YOLO v6 concatenates features from various reparameterized blocks. For this reason, it is called reparameterized PAN or rep PAN for short. Finally, the, the last stage of the architecture is the detection head. And when we talked about the LOX model, we have talked about the decoupled head. Decoupling just means separating the classification and the detection branches. In the previous LO models, they use a coupled head. So during training, they trained the classification and regression parameters at the same time. But unlike the YOLO v4 and YOLO v5 models, the YOLO v6 architecture used the efficient decoupled head. This means that the classification and detection branches do not share the same parameters and branch out from the backbone separately. This further reduces computations and provides a higher accuracy as well. Finally, uh, once uh, we have finished talking about the architecture of the model, let's now introduce the loss functions used in the YOLO v6 model. The YOLO v6 object detection model requires two loss functions. The first one is the varifocal loss, and it's only used for the classification task, as you can see from the image. And the second one is a distribution focal loss, along with SIOU or GIOU as box regression loss. And so one is used for classification and the other is only used for localization. So here for the box regression, they used the IOU series loss and the distribution focal loss. But main, uh, we have already talked about most of the IOU losses when we discussed about Here's a YOLO v4 model, and you can watch that video if you, if you want to catch up with this loss. But here, we are, we are only going to focus on the distribution focal loss because it's uh, the newly introduced loss by the YOLO v6 model. 
the VFL originates from the original focal loss and as you, uh, if you have watched my previous videos I have already mentioned the focal loss and in order to give some kind of review about the focal loss it was first introduced by uh, Facebook in their new uh, in their uh, in their new paper and the focal loss what it does is, is it just adds a new parameter known as gamma and this is a scaling factor which was added to the nor to the categorical uh, cross entropy loss that you that you are familiar with from previous uh, deep learning topics and as you can see from this graph uh, when we talk about object detection, uh, there, there, there are hard examples and there are easy examples. So the easy examples are easier to classify and detect, and the harder examples are, are the ones which are harder to detect. So for example, if you have an image of a person inside an image, so uh, in order to detect that person, most of the background class will be easily classified but the person is just only one person so it's harder to classify so the model is optimized is optimized to learn the background and not optimized to learn the harder to, cl to classify examples if you just generally have a simple classification task uh, you, you do not um, normally suffer from an unbalanced data set, but m when you do a detection or segmentation task, uh, most of the pixels are going to be classified as background and only the regions that detect the object in concern are the ones that are going to be correctly classified. So there is going to be a symmetry between the two classes. So what they did was by introducing this new gamma factor, they tried to penalize uh, some of these easy examples. So here on the y-axis we have the loss and on the x-axis we have the probability of the ground truth class. And as you can see the loss is decreasing uh, as we go from left to right. And the blue line indicates when the gamma factor is zero. So we are not uh, penalizing the easy examples and you can see that the loss is only low for the well classified examples but for the harder ones the gradient for the harder examples is still high so it's not the loss is not uh, including the harder to classify examples because it's mostly populated with the easier to classify examples so in order to balance these two, what they did was by introducing the gamma factor and penalizing the negative examples more, when you increase the gamma, you can see that the loss decreases significantly. Now, when we see the green line when gamma equals to five, that the loss is very low. And it's also including both the harder and easy examples. Uh, which are lower than one so it's mostly considering both the harder the positive examples and the negative examples so in yolo v6 they modified the focal loss and introduced what is known as the very focal loss so the we have already talked about the gamma term but we also have an alpha term and the alpha term is basically a weighted categorical cross entropy and it's basically the frequency of the positive and negative examples so for example if you have 20 pos positive and 80 negative examples so you take the ratio 20 divided by 100 for the alpha which is the positive examples and for the negative uh, this will be 1 minus 0 0.2 which is 0 0.8 so it's just a weighted term for the frequency of the classes so the alpha term usually wants to make the 
wants to balance the number of hard and easy examples so that they could be symmetrical. But in case of the varifocal loss, the VFL also treats the positive and negative examples at different degrees of importance. That means in the focal loss, they were treated the same way, but in terms of the varifocal loss, we treat the positive examples differently from the negative examples. And this helps in balancing the learning signals from both samples because we want to we want to optimize our model to detect the positive examples more and not be concerned about the negative examples. And the varifocal loss treats the positive examples and the negative examples asymmetric asymmetrically. And unlike the focal loss, which treats them equally, the your, the varifocal loss introduced by the yellow V6 model treats them asymmetrically. This means that the loss doesn't decrease for the positive examples by the same amount that it decreases for the negative examples, which means the loss, the, the, the rate in which the loss decreases for the positive and negative examples are not the same. Finally, uh, they introduced the distribution focal loss, uh, which is also known as the DFL for, for the bounding box regression. Yolo V6 uh, medium and large models use DFL for box regression loss, and the DFL treats the continuous distribution of box locations as a dis discretized probability distribution. So the DFL loss is just mostly uh, using a discretized probability distribution instead of a continuous distribution of box locations. And this is especially useful in, in detection when the boundaries of the ground truths are blurred. So when you, as you can see from this picture, uh, there is a surfer. And when you take a look at, when you zoom in and look at the the surfing board, you can actually detect the corner of the image using the correctly classified bounding box. But if you use a larger bounding box, you can see that there, there are some waters and we cannot see the corner of the surfing board. So if you use a larger, without using the distribution focal loss, if you use a larger detection bounding box, it will be ambiguous and flattened. But when you discretize the continuous distribution into a probability distribution, you can see that it's going to be very, very certain and accurate in detecting the corners of the object that we are interested in detecting. If you just want to detect the surfer uh, together with the surfing board, then it might be easier, but when you want, when you just want to detect smaller objects, which are mostly, uh, which are mostly blurred, and some of them might be obscured by other objects, such as the water, uh, you want to use the distribution focal loss. And the DFL V2 was also experimented with, uh, which introduced a lightweight subnetwork. But this, is, this also meant extra computations and no improvements over DFL were observed, so they stuck to the original DFL as a localization loss function. They wanted to use a newly introduced DFL v2, but it, it also introduced some uh, computation costs, so in order to reduce that burden, so they just stuck to the, their original plan with the DFL loss only, and they did not use the DFL version 2. Some other major improvements in Yolo V6 for industrial applications includes longer training. A few Yolo V6 models were trained for 400 epochs instead of the general 300 epochs. This led to a better convergence. And another is the self-distillation 
in, uh, in which the Yellow V6 model used a knowledge distillation to further improve the accuracy of the models. This is possible without involving a huge computation cost as well. So knowledge distillation is just a method used a method used in deep learning where a teacher model is used to train a student model. So the predictions of the teacher model act as soft labels along with the ground truths to train as a student model. So if you have already if you already have trained a, a model and you want to train a different model, then you can just transfer the predictions from the teacher model as soft labels to the student model so that they can be used together with the ground truths for the student model to improve the performance. Now let's talk about the training implementation details for the uh, YOLO v6 model. So for optimizers, they used the stochastic gradient descent with momentum and cosine decay learning rate. For the optimizer weight decay, they have settled uh, on the exponential moving average. We have already talked about the exponential moving average in detail in a previous video. For data, data augmentation, they still use a mosaic and mix up. For the training data, they used the COCO 2017 training data set. And for validation data, they also used the COCO 2017 validation set. For the training hardware, they used eight NVIDIA A100 GPUs. And the speed benchmark hardware they used was the NVIDIA Tesla T4 GPU with Tensor RT version 7.2. Now, let's see the results from the YOLO v6 model and compare it with other models. The figure on the left shows the comparison of the mean average precision and latency between the YOLO v6 and other models. As you can see on the y-axis, we have the average precision for the COCO dataset and we have the latency when using the Tesla T4 Tensor RT GPU. One important observation that can be gleaned from the above figure is that the quantized YOLO v6s model is faster and has higher MAP compared to its counterparts in other uh, YOLO versions. So the red line on the graph shows the results from the different uh, types of YOLO v6 models. So we have the nano model, the small YOLO v6 model, the medium and the large. And the blue line indicates the YOLO v5 model and the yellow line indicates the new YOLO v7 model. And the green line indicates the YOLO x model. And the purple line indicates the PP YOLO e, which is the third version of PP YOLO. In terms of mean average precision, all the YOLO v6 models seem to be performing better than the other YOLO versions. As you can see, the red line performs far more better than the other models. Let's now take a look at the quanti quantitative results of COCO 2017 validation set benchmarks. It is as clear as glass that the YOLO v6 models are performing better than the other YOLO models. It is even more astonishing that the YOLO v6L ReLU model with 58.5 million parameters is surpassing the PP YOLO E large model and the YOLO X large models in both speed and accuracy. As you can see from the table, we have the YOLO v5 models on the first row and we have the YOLO X models on the second row. Here we have the PP YOLO family and we have the YOLO v7 and the YOLO v6 model. In terms of average precision, you can see that the YOLO v6 large model is 52.5 for the validation set. And when you compare it with YOLO v7, it's 51.2. So in terms of average precision, YOLO v6 model outperforms all of the previous YOLO models. And we're not only comparing it in terms of average precision, 
but we are also considering the latency, the number of parameters, and the frames per second, so that we can actually compare the speed for uh, training the model. Uh, here we can see that the Yolo V6 model has only 58.5 million uh, parameters uh, for the Yolo V6 model. And uh, for the PP Yolo E, we have uh, 52.2 million parameters. And in terms of uh, frames per second, here we have 121 and here we have 127. Finally, let's talk about the label assignment strategies. The sim order also successful and even used in YOLO X is, is uh, slower and moreover the TAL provides 0.5% uh, compared to the sim OTA method. So uh, for YOLO V6 they used the TAL label assignment method and it, give, it gave them an average precision of uh, 35 percent uh, which was higher than uh, the rest of the techniques so they just used the TAL method for the label as, as a label assignment strategy. TAL just stands for the task aligned labels. That's all about the LOV6 model. Thank you for watching this video and